Hello, I am British Schnob. After all those years, I finally return. No, not really. This is one and only Michael A. Grimm, a.k.a. the multi-voice. I have many voices, but one opinion. And this is another review feud, folks. You know, I've been doing a lot of science fiction reviews and even one fantasy. And I got kind of wore out over science fiction stuff. So, I decided to review something that I haven't reviewed in a while. A British comedy. You know, I love British comedy. I mean, I know some of you would say, because I'm an American, I would have enjoyed American comedy, but... American comedies these days are getting a little... Mm, I mean, there's all this woke stuff going on, it's getting ridiculous, and also, um, there are a few offensive jokes, but sometimes they get kind of crude and not exactly that funny. I mean, like, take the uh, National Lampoons for, for, as an example. National Lampoon started out as a comedy magazine until they started making movies that are sort of based from their from their magazines. And they made Vacation, they made Animal House, and I mean they made tons of other National Lampoon stuff until around uh, the late 90s and early 2000s every movie it has the name National Lampoon in it they're not that funny. And they kept getting raunchier and raunchier and raunchier that they always have porn stars making nude scenes in every single shot on every National Lampoon movie. That it's not even funny anymore. And that's why I prefer British comedy because British comedy had something. It has a different style, it is hilarious, they're funny, and, um, I mean, compared to the British comedy of the day, which I have watched, I mean, I love IT Crowd, and, um, of course, I always enjoy, I already reviewed, uh, Are You Being Served, I do like keeping up appearances, I always love watching the Monty Python films, but... This comedy I'm talking about is called Carry On. Now, what can I say about the Carry On films? What can I say about the Carry On films? They are not like any other. I mean, they do show nudity, they do get a little raunchy, but it's all in good fun compared to the modern ones. Hell, even parody movies are getting not so funny now. And the only good parodies you can watch is on YouTube because they make better parodies than the Hollywood movie does. But anyway, Carry On, I mean, they are like the heart of British comedy and they do do parodies, of course. And how it all started... Carry On started back in 1958 with Carry On Sergeant. And that movie had William Hartnell. That's right, the first Doctor Who actor who played the first Doctor in Doctor Who who plays the Sergeant on Carry On Sergeant. But of course, they even have... And one thing about the Carry On films, they always have the same cast of actors who can make things funny. And that's one thing it's good about them. Because they recycle some of the cast members on their show to make things funny. First it starts out with uh, Kenneth William, who always be, who kind of acts a little flamboyant, going like, oh no, that's not exactly what I had in mind. Oh, wow. It's nice to meet you. 
And of course they had um, Charlie bear with me on the name Charlie Haytree Charlie Haytree now he is the most hilarious one because I mean his famous catchphrase is he always shows up and saying hello oh hello 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 but he is a really funny guy and of course, they even had some funny women in the show. Like, for instance, there is Hattie Jack Jack Cruz. Hattie Jack Cruz. Now she's like the mom, the mother of the series because she's always been the kind-hearted, the gentle one of the bunch. And in real life, she was very nice and kind and and heck they even heck the BBC did a biography movie about her called Hattie which is a rom which it is a uh, comedy drama about her life and of course uh, another member of the groups is of course Kenneth Connor and he is pretty much one of the most hilarious side characters who always uh, I mean one thing about Carry On is they make a, they do parodies and they also do slapstick so there's always been physical comedy and then they added again when they did more physical comedy on Carry On Nurse. And they had two more cast members who joined. And one of the most hilarious women of all is, of course, June Sims. Now, June Sims, I mean, she had the mixture of beauty and humor. I mean, she really makes really funny performance and really good physical comedy like when she's trying to teach kids I mean teach her students to exercise and when she bend her knees her shorts get ripped in half and that was pretty em embarrassing and also another cast member is of course Leslie Phillips now he only appeared in a couple of carry on films but he didn't stick around throughout the rest of the films but he had a catchphrase on most of the Carry On films. He always, I mean, he always says, Ding Dong. I mean, he always shows around saying, Ding Dong. <laughs> and, of course, uh, when he uh, kissed a nurse and a nurse slapped him, he says, Ding Dong, Carry On. <laughs> and then they did one called carry on teacher and that's when they started getting away with some of the stuff that they said like uh, for instance uh, Joan Sims plays an aerobics teacher who goes by the name of Miss Alcock <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> Back in 1959, that's where Carry On Nurse and Carry On Teacher came out, which it was just kind of showing, you know, how the school worked. And then they uh, did it again in 1960, where they did Carry On Constable. And that's when they started starring one of my personal favorite members of of the Carry On films, which is Sid James. Out of all the actors from the Carry On films, Sid James is my favorite because he he makes double entendre jokes that he gets away with saying things, and he has the icon laugh that you never could expect it. I mean, he always makes this laugh. It goes like ha ha. 
I mean, I kind of like how he does that. His, uh, ha <laughs> ha thing. Sid James has always been my, uh, has always been my favorite in the Carry On films. And then they did, um, Carry On Regardless in 1961. And that's when, and of course, this is how it changed in 1962, where now British movies are now gone to color and did their first genuine colorized movie, which is Carry On Cruising. Now, Carry On Cruising is supposed to be like a, you know, a cruise ship thing. And that's when they... And then, all of a sudden, they decided to have a leading man in the whole story. So, when they did another one called Carry On Cabbie in 1963, they introduced a former pop singer, now become actor, Jim Dale. And, um... I've been noticing that Jim Dale always plays the nice, decent guy who, you know, knows exactly what's going on, and and he's trying his best to make himself look good, but there's other people who don't like him and trying to have him expelled. So. And then they did another one called Carry On Jack in 1964. When the James Bond films start becoming a big thing at the time with Sean Connery, they went back on black and white and made Carry On Spy. And that's when they started introducing another member who has beauty but also has sexuality throughout the whole franchise. And her name is Barbara Winshaw. Now, Barbara Winshaw, she's the, the sexy, blonde, girly type who is not much of a girly because um, you always see her, you know, wear something kinky and wearing a kind of bra makes her look more buxom. And um, one thing I remember was so funny, there was a guy who was eating a pear and when she walked by, he was staring at her while he was eating his pear. And she walked up to him and says, Oh, what a lovely pear. Ma'am, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and that's when they started getting a little raunchy. Because that's when they started to um, make the... Um, that's when they started to make most of... I mean, when they, when they went to color... Most of the carry-on films decided to get a little raunchy by showing some sexuality, but not really, not much nudity. Just, just, you know, see women in bikinis and even women with bras and panties and garter belts. Kind of like Benny Hill. But, um... And then, when they made the, uh... When they, when they made that one movie, Cleopatra, they decided to do their own version, and much of their luck, they used the same set that they used in that Cleopatra movie, so they made Carry On Cleo in 1964. And then they decided to go to the Old West in 1965 when they made Carry On Cowboy. And there they also introduce Peter Bettersworth and Burnett Breslow. Breslow. And then when the Hammer films started becoming a big hit with their Hammer Dracula and Hammer Frankenstein, they decided to do a parody of Hammer, which is Carry On Screaming in 1966.
And then they decided to go back in the period of the Georgian era during the French Revolutionary. So they did Carry On, Don't Lose Your Head in 1967. Where it's about uh, they're doing like a parody of the Scarlet Pimple Nail. But of course it's the black finger and it has a picture of this with one of the fingers painted black. That's his calling card trying to save some of the rich people from being beheaded in France. <laughs> now, during around the same time in 1967, they decided to make a movie that is not Carry On related. I mean, they decided not to call it Carry On, but since it was funny enough, they decided to add the Carry On afterwards. And which is... And that's the first time they had an American actor, American comedian in their movie, which is called Carry On, Follow That Camel, starring Phil Silvers as the American who showed up in the movie. You know, Mr. Sergeant Bilko himself. <laughs> and then in 1968, they made Carry On Doctor. And that's when they started introducing Frankie Howard. Frankie Howard. And then in 1968, they made... Carry on up to Kyber. And that's when they started introducing more, more uh, actors like um, Terry Scott. And also the Raquel Relch of the Carry On film, Valerie Logan. I mean, a lot of people do say that she's like the Raquel Relch of the Carry On films. Because, um,. One time she wears the uh, Raquel Welch outfit in one of the carry-on films that I'm going to mention soon. And then they went back to hospital in Carry On Again Doctor in 1969. Ooh, 69. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Just kidding. And that's when they introduce Patsy Rollins who always play the girl who is madly in love with somebody, so she tries her best to get the guy's attention. And then they decided to go to the great outdoors by making Carry On Camping. Where are they supposed to go on camping? Now, one thing that most people do remember on Carry On Camping is when Barbara was doing some workouts and of course Kenneth William going like and one and two and three and one come on ladies get those breasts out and one and two now both and one and Barbara's brassiere just pops out of her chest <laughs> that was good <laughs> mm. Although, a lot of people do say, if you pause some of the carry-on movies just right, you could pretty much saw, see Barbara's breasts in those movies. And then here's the one where I talk about Valerie's um, Raquel Welch outfit in 1970 when they made Carry On Up the Jungle where it's a parody of Tarzan in this one. And, you know, before everybody remembered George of the Jungle, you know, George, George, George of the Jungle, strong as he can be, oh, watch out for that tree. Well, on Carry On Up to Jungle, there's a jungle boy in that movie who always kept getting hit by trees. So, 
I guess he needs to start watching out for that tree besides George. <laughs> And then in 1969, and then 72, and 73, they made these carry-on Christmas movies. I guess they had to do Christmas specials somehow. And then in 1970, they decided to make sort of a romance matchmaker kind of movie. So therefore, they made Carry On Loving. I always enjoyed that one because, um, I mean, the girls are lovely in that, uh, in that movie, and, um, I kind of like the chemistry and the romance. And then they decided to go back into the, uh, medieval times where they made Carry On Henry VIII, where Sid's playing Henry. Ha <laughs> ha! And, of course, that's when they started m introducing this uh, really sexy and buxom bombshell herself. Margaret Nolan. Margaret Nolan was one of the most beautiful and sexiest buxom actresses in the Carry On films, along with all the other actresses. I'm not picking favorites. In 1971, they made... Carry On Roundabout, a.k.a. Carry On At Your Convenient. Now, there was also another Carry On in 1960, I mean 1972. There is, uh, Carry On Matron. Carry On Matron. Where they introduce another cast member who also appeared on the show as well who appeared on most of the movies, Jack Douglas, who has his own style of humor, like uh, play a guy who has a twitch and goes like, Oi, trying to have some fun. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then they did like a holiday kind of movie when they did in 1972... Carry On Abroad, where a group of people decided to take a holiday, and they went to this uh, country that pretty much looks like it's pronounced Hell's Bells. And, I mean, it's just so downright funny. And then they decided to show more women throughout the whole... I mean, introduce all the beautiful women and the buxom ones and the sexy ones when they made this one in 1973, Carry On Girls. And, believe it or not, the actress who played Miss Brom on... Um, who played Miss Brom on Are You Being Served made an appearance in this movie, Carry On Girls, played by... Wendy Richards. Wendy Richard. You know, the one they call her Sexy Knickers. <laughs> Another episode I forgot. In 1974, they did Carry On Dick, where it is a parody of Dick Turpin. Well, in 1975, they made Carry On Behind. Oh yeah, it's definitely, yeah. Carry On Behind is definitely the camping one. Because on this one it had the bird who kept on saying things that pretty much uh, got this one guy's attention. I mean, the bird always kept saying, Show me your knickers. Who's a chicky boy? Lovely. Get stuffed. <laughs> and I love the conversation between the guy and the bird going like, um, Get stuffed. Psst. Won't you say? Show me your knickers. Your mom's got a bigger surprise for you, Polly. Who's a cheeky boy, then? You are, Polly. Get stuff! <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I like it when the dog is sniffing about the cage, and he kept saying this to the dog. Get stuff! Show me your knickers. <laughs> <laughs> and then in 1975... 
And also, Carry On decided to do a TV series in 1975 when they made a, um, maybe a, th maybe it's a three series or two series season series of Carry On called Carry On Laughing, where they use the same cast members, the same actors from all the other Carry On films. And then, this is when most of the Carry On movies has been going a little downhill lately. Because they may... And this is the one where they finally did show some topless nudity in... in this one. In 1976, they made Carry On England. Which is supposed to be a war movie. Where... It's supposed to be one of the war movies where most of the men soldiers and the female soldiers are now sharing the same bunk, even though they're supposed to be on separate areas, separate bunks. And of course, the main character himself is, of course, Patrick Muir. And then that's when things gets a little too raunchy in 1978 when they made Carry On Emmanuel. Now, I don't know what Emmanuel means to you, but one thing I do know for sure for those of you who grew up around the 90s and 2000s, any movie that has a name Emmanuel in it, that means that those movies are softcore porn. I know, because I used to have Cinemax. And of course, this movie has this uh, French actress named Susanna Daniels, who's like, the main character in the whole movie. And she wasn't too afraid to show off her breasts and her butt. But sadly, Carry On Emmanuel tanked very bad. And then here are the sad parts. Most of the uh, Carry On cast members, most of them passed away. Some of them died of alcohol poisoning. Like, uh, I heard about the Charlie Hallowell. He, um, he, I mean, he was a terrible alcoholic, and they tried to get him out of alcohol, but when they were doing uh, Carry On Abroad, they got him back into alcohol, and all that went downhill to him pretty fast. And, um, heck, I even heard that, um, I heard that, um, that, um, Sid James, he died during the middle, I mean, at the end of his play, he was, I mean, when he's not doing Carry On Films, he was doing Broadway plays, and surprisingly, he died of a heart attack right at the end of the play. And everybody thought it was part of the act, but it wasn't. And... I mean, Sid James was one of my favorites, and I was so surprised at how he died. And of course, I also heard that um, that Kenneth William committed suicide, although not many people know that he did commit suicide or not. I mean, there's some people who don't want to believe that he did, but... Eh. And Carry On Emmanuel was Kenneth Williams' last Carry On film that he ever did. But, of course, they tried to uh, bring uh, Carry On back with some of the cast members, but they also added some new ones. Some of the comedians from the 80s and 90s, like uh, Rick Mayall, Don French, Jennifer Saunders, any of the other British actors, I mean, British comedians who are still around today. And in 1992, they made Carry On Columbus 
which it just wasn't the same. I mean, without any of the original cast members of Carry On, it's just not that funny. And replacing them with modern modern comedians, it's just not that funny. I mean, it's just like what they did on Saturday Night Live when their host was Milton Berle, who's been doing comedy skit shows since the 50s. And having him appeared in the 70s with Saturday Night Live, it just, he wasn't, it just, it didn't go as funny as you hope. And now I'm hearing everybody's planning to remake most of the Carry On films. I mean, do remakes and all. I mean, Carry On is a dead franchise. But, I do have a thought. I mean, I do miss these comedians. I mean, even though I don't know them, but I do enjoy watching them on television and everything. And I do have an idea. How about... They should do... A biography comedy. Make a biography... About Carry On calling it Carry On Biography, where you have all the British actors playing those comedians. And um, if that Carry On Biography goes well, they can use those same casts to make new Carry On films. Now, that's just my idea. I mean, I don't know if that's going to be a good idea or not. I mean, possibilities. I mean, ever since when they did Doctor Who, they did that documentary called Adventures Through Time and Space, and they had the actor who played William Hartnell, the first Doctor, and then after that, they started using him playing the first Doctor throughout the whole Doctor Who series. So, they should do a carry-on biography and have some of the cast members who play those carry-on comedians use them for the new carry-ons. Speaking of biography, I just recently discovered this movie made in the year 2000, and it's called Cole Blimey, and it's a story about uh, Sid James and also... Barbara Winshaw. But this is my thought. And this is my review for today. If any of you like my review of Carry On, please leave a comment down below. Hit like and subscribe for more. And um, I'm still working on the audio drama of Flash Gordon meets Buck Rogers. While at the same time, I'm also trying to plan some other ideas for me to do. Like I'm planning on doing some riffs and whatnot. So, I'm the multi-voice reviewer. I remember it so I can jog your memory.